closer look at Geico. Geico has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and fast and friendly claim service. Speaking of service. Oh, just out. It was in. Out. In. Out. In. What about now? That was our only shot of cock. Take a closer look at Geico. Great savings and a whole lot more. Working hard to lower your LDL bad cholesterol? Not making enough progress? You eat well, take the highest dose statin you can, but still aren't getting where you need to be. Now there's Repatha, a different way to reduce LDL and get on the path to dramatically lower numbers. Repatha works differently than your statin to help clear LDL. Repatha plus the highest dose statin drove down LDL an average of 71% more than a statin alone. Do not take Repatha if you are allergic to it. Repatha may cause allergic reactions. Signs include redness, severe rash or itching, swollen face, or trouble breathing. The most common side effects include runny nose, sore throat, common cold symptoms, flu or flu-like symptoms, back pain, and redness, pain, or bruising at the injection site. Added to a highest dose step, Repatha lowered LDL below 70 for up to 90% of people. Ask if Repatha can get you on the path to way lower LDL. We needed to hire someone, but it was really tough finding people that had the right experience. I was spending half my day just reading resumes. To hire great people, go to ZipRecruiter.com and post to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with one click. Then, easily select the best candidates from one list. I'm seeing a lot more candidates with the right experience. We have gotten consistently better results from ZipRecruiter than anywhere else. Over 1 million businesses have already used ZipRecruiter. Try it for free today at ZipRecruiter.com slash news TV. Come on, Josh. When someone truly believes in you, you can achieve great things, like hitting the game-winning home run. At Lone Depot, we believe in helping you achieve the American dream of owning a home. Lone Depot is the only lender that provides critical illness coverage which you can use to pay your mortgage payments, up to $30,000 in case you're unable to work. That's impressive. And if interest rates ever drop, you can refinance without any lender closing costs. Lone Depot. We believe in you. There are lots of reasons why Budget Blinds is the largest provider of custom window coverings in North America. We were named Best of House for beautiful style and expert service. We give you no surprises pricing, plus the best warranty in the business. Right now, it's our 25th anniversary celebration, so you'll get even better values during our biggest sale of the year. Get the biggest and the best. Go online to budgetblinds.com or call 855-BUDGET-BLINDS. Senator Ron Johnson said he was just misunderstood. The Republican from Wisconsin wants you to know at home that he was just being sympathetic when he suggested that John McCain's brain tumor drove him to vote no on the Obamacare repeal bill. Now, let me remind you what Senator Johnson said in a radio interview on Tuesday. We did get a call from Paul, and he assured us that, that, that any repeal is not going to pass the House, and it would have to go to conference. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to speak to John McCain. Um, you know, he has, he has a brain tumor right now. That vote occurred at 1.30 in the morning, so some of that might have factored in. I don't know exactly what. We really thought that, again, yeah, I don't want to. I really thought John was going to vote yes at that conference so at 10.30 uh, at night by about 1, 1.30 uh, he voted no. So I, 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 you have to conference what, what, what the, was on his mind. Well, Senator Johnson tried to put some distance between himself and that comment you just heard, saying yesterday that he wishes he had been more eloquent. He was on CNN's New Day this morning. So I was I was trying to defend his position and truthfully just express my sympathy for his for his health condition. So again, I I, I reached out to John. I'm, I'm hoping to talk to him today. Uh, I, I just have the greatest respect for John McCain. Is that the moment where if you're working for Ron Johnson, you're just like trying to send him messages with your mind? Stop! Stop talking! Stop <laughs> using words! No more! Yeah, it's just a, it's a bad move. You want to tread very, very, very lightly in somebody who obviously has a very serious health condition. Um, and in the context of the vote, it's about health care. But Johnson is not known as like a mean guy or anything. No. So I'm very confident McCain and Johnson will work this out between each other. Uh, not a great look for him, though. Well, let's talk about John McCain. He did a Facebook Live chat yesterday. And as part of it, he addressed his disease. Let's listen. 
but my friends, this is a very malicious disease. Uh, but I've had other <laughs> challenges in my time as well. And I don't mean to be repetitious, but to my Democrat friends and some of my Republican friends, I'm coming back. <laughs> That's a threat. <laughs> I promise. I mean, I, one thing about Senator Johnson, he should have stuck to his decision not to speak for other senators. And, you know, we all covered that. It was obvious that John McCain knew exactly what he was yes, doing he was. for hours there. This was not, we've all seen him, like, do a seat of the pants, and this was not anything like this. This was a really thought-out uh, decision. I mean, you know, Ted Kennedy had the same disease, wasn't able to actually function in the Senate as much as McCain. Looks like he's trying to do. I, I'm sure he will be back on this one. Carl, rescue. I want you to see another moment, television moment, that Ron Johnson had uh, this morning on the day. Let's get through some of your big points. So this is the morning broccoli here, huh? Well, let's start with just the basic fact of what our health care system is. Appreciate the, 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 saying, the PowerPoint, uh, this is fabulous. They're saying that John King may have competition, and it is embarrassing to me that you first time out you're way better at using the wall than I am. But Senator, thank you. I'm a business guy. Well, first of all, PowerPoint. It's okay, it's the magic wall. But you know, I don't know. He's usually in this chair. Maybe he should, he should get, or be, maybe be happy that Ron Johnson won uh, his re-election so that he's uh, free from the anchor chair for the next six years. I'm just saying, they have a game show, like a, a magic wall off. <laughs> PowerPoint, PowerPoint off. PowerPoint off. <laughs> that's, that's the Senator Johnson we know. He shows some some promise. Yeah, no there. Yeah, sure. yeah. As I said, he's a business guy. He knows from PowerPoint, or as we say in the TV biz, <laughs> the magic wall. Thank you so much much for joining us on Inside Politics. Wolf Blitzer is up right after a break. Boost. It's about moving forward, not back. It's looking up, not down. It's being in motion. Boost High Protein. It's intelligent nutrition with 15 grams of protein and 26 vitamins and minerals. Boost, the number one high protein complete nutritional drink. With menopause, I expected hot flashes. But Struggling to zip my jeans? I'm not ready for elastic waistbands. Only estrogen weight management helps safely manage weight and release hot flashes. Safe, trusted estrogen. I could describe IHOP's new French toast to donuts. I could say French toast to a donut and topping it with bacon or fruit makes it unbelievably delicious. But those eyebrows say it all. Get French toast to donuts is a combo. Only at IHOP. In just days, the Publishers Clearinghouse $15 million summer prize event will be over. Don't miss your last chance to win. Hurry, enter at PCH.com before it's too late. August 31st, you can win $15 million. Don't miss out. Depression is a tangle of multiple symptoms. That's why there's Trintelix, a prescription medication for depression. Trintelix may help you take a step forward in improving your depression. Tell your healthcare professional right away if your depression worsens or you have unusual changes in mood, behavior, or thoughts of suicide. Antidepressants can increase these in children, teens, and young adults. Do not take it any otherwise. Tell your healthcare professional about your medications, including migraine, psychiatric, and depression medications, to avoid a potentially life-threatening condition. Increased risk of bleeding and bruising may occur, especially if taken with insect pain relievers, aspirin, and blood thinners. Manic episodes of issue problems may occur in some people. May cause low sodium levels. The most common side effects are nausea, constipation, and nausea. Trintelics have no significant impact on weight in clinical trials. Ask your healthcare professional about Trintelics. There's nothing more important than your health. So if you're on Medicaid or will be soon, you may want more than parts of your need. Here's why. Medicare only covers about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. The rest is up to you. You might want to consider an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan, insured by your Med Healthcare Insurance Company. Like any Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan, these help pick up some of what Medicare doesn't pay. And these plans let you choose any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare patients. You could stay with a doctor or specialist you trust, or go with someone new. You're not stuck in a network, because there aren't any. So don't wait. Call now to request your free decision guide. 
and find the AARP Medicare Supplement Plan that works for you. There's a range to choose from, depending on your needs and your budget. Rates are competitive, and they're the only plans of their kind endorsed by AARP. Like any of these types of plans, they let you apply whenever you want. There's no enrollment window, no waiting to apply. So call now. Remember, Medicare supplement plans help cover some of what Medicare doesn't pay. You'll be able to choose any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare patients. Whether you're on Medicare now or turning 65 soon, it's a good time to get your ducks in a row. Call to request your free decision guide now. Because the time to think about tomorrow is today. Hello, I'm Wolf Blitzer. It's 1 p.m. here in Washington, 8 p.m. in Moscow, 3 a.m. Friday in Guam, wherever you're watching from around the world. Thanks very much for joining us. Up first, President Trump about to huddle with his uh, national security team as North Korea ups the ante regarding its threat against the United States. The regime of Kim Jong-un is outlining details of its plan to strike near the U.S. territory of Guam. North Korea says it involves a simultaneous firing of four intermediate-range missiles aimed at the waters just off the Pacific Island. Pyongyang also mocked President Trump's threat to unleash a fire and fury against North Korea, calling it, and I'm quoting the North Korean statement right now, a load of nonsense. Here in Washington, the Trump administration is pushing back against criticism that it's sending mixed messages on North Korea. Some of you may disagree with this, but the United States is on the same page. Uh, whether it's the White House, the State Department, the Department of Defense, we are speaking with one voice. We are all singing from the same hymn book. Let's bring in our CNN White House reporter, Caitlin Collins, our Pentagon uh, correspondent, Barbara Stark, and our senior international correspondent, Ivan Watson. He's in Guam for us right now. Uh, Caitlin, the president uh, gets a high-level national security briefing very soon. Give us a preview of who we'll be meeting with and what we can expect uh, the next U.S. step in response to the latest North Korean threat. Yeah, that's right. Well, the president is going to have a high-level security briefing this afternoon at his golf course here in Bedminster, New Jersey. He will be with HR National Security Advisor HR McMaster, his new chief of staff, John Kelly, and Vice President Mike Pence all here this afternoon. Reporters will get a chance to see the president after this briefing happens, where the president has the opportunity to comment further on his remarks the other day that he would respond with fire and fury in response to if North Korea continued to threaten the United States. We also heard from the White House earlier this morning on North Korea's threat to strike Guam. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the press secretary, said that the president's thinking had not changed and that he made it very clear where he stood on North Korea. But you're right, we have heard some mixed messaging coming out of this administration. We heard from Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. He said Americans could sleep well at night. And then Defense Secretary James Mattis kind of escalated that rhetoric against North Korea. So there have been some mixed messages coming out. But it remains to be seen if the president will comment further on North Korea today. We are told that Caitlin that a pool of reporters and crew will go in at the end of that national security briefing and potentially have an opportunity to hear from the president. This would be his first public comment since the latest North Korean threat. Uh, isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. All right, so we'll stand by for that and we'll take, presumably, at the end of this briefing uh, and get the uh, President's reaction, the latest reaction to this escalating nuclear tension. Uh, Caitlin, we'll stand by. Uh, Barbara Starr, what do we know, first of all, about these missiles uh, that North Korea is now threatening to fire uh, into the waters just off Guam, maybe 10 or 20 miles off the coast of Guam? Well, look, they're called the Raysong 12s. These are so called intermediate range ballistic missiles. They're well within range 
of being able to hit Ron with them, having a, a theoretical flight range of about 2,000 miles plus. Um, and the reason we say theoretical, because North Korean missiles are not known for their precision, accuracy, and targeting. It will have to be determined as soon as they, if they fire them, if they fire them, there will be very quick analysis by U.S. and military intelligence about the trajectory and whether or not they can actually hit Guam. And that's what people are going to be looking for. I think it's important to say, while well, this is so serious, it is a threat still today on paper. The North Koreans have these missiles, they have tested them, they have been able to successfully fire them. No question about that. But whether they can actually live up to the threat of being able to send them so far and target Guam will remain to be seen. It doesn't lessen the concern, it doesn't lessen the threat, but the North Koreans have had some issues with their targeting. So it's something to keep an eye on as the U.S. begins to prepare what response, if any, it will have in place. Wolf? If these missiles are launched uh, toward the uh, U.S. territory of Guam, Ivan, you're there in Guam for us. Uh, it's considered, uh, as they call it, the tip of the spear of the U.S. military presence in the Pacific. So it's, uh, it's sort of uh, used to being in, in at least the rhetorical crosshairs of this tension, but what's the reaction there now to this latest very specific military threat coming from North Korea? Well, it tip of the spear with two important U.S. military bases, but also home to more than 160,000 American civilians. Uh, and there is concern here in Guam, but certainly no signs of panic. That's partially because the uh, civilian officials here, the governor who I caught up with, is insisting that the threat level is not raised to Guam right now. And I had a chat with him about some of the, the defensive measures that he feels uh, have him feeling confident about Guam's safety. Take a listen. How much does Guam depend on the FAD missile defense system in this situation? That's the final layer. So again, there's, there's, there are several layers. There are layers that are, are, are floating in the Pacific uh, in terms of, of, of missile defense. And there are layers that are in, I mean, there is a FAD system even in, in South Korea now. And the FAD system happens to be the last uh, in a line of, of, of or a layer uh, of a defensive shield. So that's part of why the governor here in Guam feels comfortable that for missiles to get all the way from North Korea to here, they'd have to cross uh, over South Korea, over the Sea of Japan, the East Sea, over Japan as well, and then over uh, hundreds and hundreds of miles to try to reach this area as well. And, and they would have to deal with U.S., South Korean, and Japanese missile defense uh, umbrella and security. Now, as far as ordinary people go, Wolf, well, the opinion is mixed depending on how you talk to. There's some people saying, hey, we've been threatened in the past by North Korea. This is nothing new. We trust the U.S. military to protect us. Others, far more concerned. And, and one woman I talked to said she had to tell her six and eight-year-old kids what to do if there was a drill and we heard emergency sirens ringing out and they were at school and she's at work far away from them. Oh, and if those sirens go off, worst case scenario, because missiles are fired in this direction. Well, obviously a very, very scary, frightening situation. Uh, Ivan Watson, thanks. Barbara Stark, Caitlin Collins, thanks to both of you as well. Let's get some more perspective now on this North Korea threat uh, from someone with first-hand knowledge of the uh, military and diplomatic challenges involved. William Cohen served as the Defense Secretary under President Bill Clinton. Um, Secretary, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. So let's talk about the, the current state of play, the potential threat right now. How significant, how serious is it? I think we have uh, found ourselves and wrapped ourselves into a rhetorical uh, corner right now uh, that the President has, by his rhetoric initially, tempered by Secretary Tillerson and then reinforced by Secretary Mattis to say we've gone from threatening uh, action to actually having uh, the North Koreans threaten they are going to take specific action. That is something that really can't uh, be allowed to stand. Uh, and I think we have to communicate to the Chinese, this is something, if someone were to threaten you, uh, I'm going to fire four bullets at you, Wolf. Uh, they're at your feet, about 20 feet away, uh, not to worry. I don't think that will be an acceptable uh, situation. That is the equivalent of what the North Koreans are now threatening. I think the President, after he receives his brief, should make a very short, very precise, concise statement about what our policy is, and then go radio silent. 
radio silent, TV silent, tw uh, Twitter silent. But he basically drew a red line in that fire and fury statement he, uh, he made the other day. He said if there are more threats from North Korea, the U.S. will respond with fire and fury that the world has never seen before. And now North Korea, in this very specific statement that their military commander put out, delivered a specific threat to Guam, a U.S. territory threat to take action against, and that was a different thing uh, General Secretary Mattis said. If you threaten to take specific action, as opposed to just making a threat. So now we're in a situation where they're threatening to take specific action. I think what we have to do is send the signal to the Chinese saying, this is going to be met with a response. We'll determine how and when that will take place, but this is not going to go unresponded to. And so we could do a number of things. We could uh, really shut down the flow of ships going into uh, North Korea. Uh, things coming out for sale, really print their uh, economic survivability. We can do a number of things, including taking military action. Now, the president, someone has floated the notion the Pentagon is now uh, revising or updating their plans to use a B-1 uh, bomber strike, limited strike against... A uh, preemptive strike a preemptive to strike. destroy some of their missile capability. That's a very... Number one, we don't know. Is that fake news? Uh, because the president has said in the past, I'm never going to tell you what my plans are. Well, someone's telling us what the plans may we, be. We, we haven't reported that. We don't know that that's true. But I think that would be a mistake to be floating that, because that in itself could produce a reaction. So we have to be careful here, but we have to go to the Chinese and say, this is serious now. This is the, well, something well, that could listen, provoke a reaction and a military reaction. You were the defense though. secretary. You know that the military has plans for everything. Okay. Uh, so they, I'm sure they have all sorts of uh, uh, plans. But listen to Lindsey Graham, the Republican senator. He said he's spoken at length with President Trump about this. He says the president does want to find some sort of negotiated diplomatic solution, if possible. But, but then listen to what he told Hugh Hewitt on his radio program earlier. Listen to this. But if negotiations fail, fail, he is willing to abandon strategic patience and use preemption. I think he's there mentally. He has told me this. Now, the question for him is what are the options available to him under the preemption, you know, uh, scenario? He's thinking long and hard about it. His rhetoric yesterday, I think, is a change that is probably necessary. A preemptive strike. Uh, is that, in your opinion, necessary potential? I don't think it's necessary at this point. Uh, I don't think we should ever uh, plan on a preemptive strike because the consequences are uh, uncalculable. Uh, let's uh, talk about the. Let's say the U.S. launched B-1 bombers or other bombers and took out what uh, the U.S. regarded as most of their major missiles, their intercontinental ballistic missiles, and whatever nuclear capabilities they might have. How would the North Koreans respond? Well, the, the likelihood is that uh, Seoul would not exist. Seoul would be in the, the South world. Korean capital. Capital where there are 10 million people. Maybe so, 20 or 25 million people well, in the least, area. Yeah, yeah. You know, at least 10. So consider New York City. Uh, it would be the equivalent of wiping out. And uh, they could do that with conventional weapons. They could do that within 45 seconds of, um, of time, flight time into uh, Seoul. They're only a few uh, 30, 40 miles away. So, so basically the, the mortars, the artillery pieces, conventional uh, weaponry that the North Korean military has just north of the demilitarized zone, they, they would immediately respond to it. I believe they would, and I think the military planners understand that. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people uh, potentially dying. Including 28,000 U.S. troops. Including U.S. troops. So that's the calculation which has always been an impediment to our taking action. If you go back and read uh, uh, Dr. Kissinger's White House years, in 1973, Richard Nixon had a similar problem, and they hesitated to take any action. There was also fear. He had to fight on two, uh, two uh, battlefronts with Vietnam and, and Korea, but the fear was we've got a lot of people there, innocent people who would die. So, there, so from your perspective and your former defense secretary, there really isn't a preemptive strike uh, contingency that's realistic. There is a, a contingency, and it's real. But it has consequences which I think the American people and the world would find uh, really uh, unacceptable. Because the president says the U.S. cannot tolerate a nuclear-capable North Korea. And what we 
say is we have a way to try and solve that by going to the Chinese, the Russians, and others and saying, let's shut down their economy. Let's really prevent them from doing what they're doing because they've been able actually to improve their economy with the help of the Chinese, the Russians, and other people, including some of our allies. So we have to go to our allies and say, no more business with them. We, they built guns, they have missiles, they can't have butter anymore. We can't continue to give them fuel or food. That's a better option than saying, let's try a preemptive strike. You want to starve all those North Koreans, billions of North Koreans? Well, I would take that over hundreds of thousands uh, and, and potentially millions of South Koreans and the American people. Yes. Secretary Cohen, uh, all, bad, uh, all, bad all, bad, all bad options yeah. right now. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, the former Defense Secretary William Cohen. Coming up, President Trump about to get uh, a, a very high-level national security briefing amid this ongoing threat from North Korea. We're standing by for any presidential remarks. We'll have that for you. Stay with us for that. Also, other stories we're following. Grudge match. Uh, the president lashing out at the Senate Majority Leader on Twitter. So why is he attacking the man he needs to get his agenda through? We'll have details when we come back. Taxpayers have rights. Do you know your rights? We do. We're Community Tax. If you owe back taxes, have years of unfiled returns, or have received one of these, you need our help immediately. The IRS is now more aggressive than ever and even using private debt collectors to collect back taxes. With our proprietary Fast Action Response Program, Community Tax can stop wage garnishments, bank levies, and harassment now. Call Community Tax today at 800-444-1026 for a free, no-obligation case analysis. Who's your tax guy? Let's face it. Not all of your friends are created equal. Imagine traveling with a group of them. You have the night owl, there's the early bird, the lone wolf, and even the sloth. Now, of course, you wouldn't put them in the same room together. With one search, Trivago makes it easy for you to look for multiple rooms. Simply select the number of rooms and the number of people staying in them. So, same hotel, separate rooms, single search. Hotel, Trivago. The day after chemo might mean a trip back to the doctor's office, just for a shot. But why go back there when you can stay home with new Lasta On Pro? Strong chemo can put you at risk of serious infection, which could lead to hospitalizations. In a key study, new Lasta reduced the risk of infection from 17% to 1%, a 94% decrease. Applied the day of chemo, new Lasta On Pro is designed to deliver new Lasta the next day, so you can stay home. Nulasta is for certain cancer patients receiving strong chemotherapy. Do not take Nulasta if you're allergic to Nulasta or Nupogen, Filgrastin. Ruptured spleen, sometimes fatal as well as serious lung problems, allergic reactions, kidney injuries, and capillary leak syndrome have occurred. Report abdominal or shoulder tip pain, trouble breathing, or allergic reactions to your doctor right away. In patients with sickle cell disorders, serious, sometimes fatal crises can occur. The most common side effect is bone and muscle ache. So why go back there? If you'd rather be home, Ask your doctor about Nulasta on Pro. <laughs> this is Lloyd. To prove to you that the better choice for him is a weed, he's agreed to give it up. Okay, but I have 30 acres to cover by sundown. We'll be with him all day as he goes back to taking Tylenol. Yeah, I was okay, but after lunch, my knees started hurting again, so... More pills. Yep, another pill stop. Can I get my leave back yet? Am I going to be in the picture? For my pain, I want my leave. Get all day minor arthritis pain release with an easy open cap. At K-12, we believe that every child is uniquely brilliant. Our full-time tuition-free online public schools allow students to school in a way that brings out their strengths. What I like about being able to educate my son at home is that he gets to be strong in who he is, not conform to be somebody else. He was testing out at second grade level, and now he's at fifth grade level in a few short months. The quality of education that we have at K-12, it's top-notch. It's rigorous, it's engaging, the kids like what they're doing, and they want to learn more. Every kid has a talent, has a gift. To nurture that gift, to be able to tailor a learning plan for a student allows them to flourish. I get online learning, offline learning, and hands-on learning. My teacher is amazing. I love her. Join the growing community of K-12 families who have succeeded with an individually tailored, tuition-free online public school education. Call now or visit k12.com to learn more. Tuition-free for grades K-12 through in most states. It's just a burst pipe. I can fix it. <laughs> no. The claim rate guard, your rates won't go up just because of the claim. I totally could. No.
Switching to Allstate is worth it. Close captioning brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. That's why we offer this free book. Call toll-free at 1-800-400-5415. Welcome back. In less than an hour or so from now, President Trump's scheduled to have a high-level national security briefing as North Korea threatens a strike on the U.S. territory of Guam. We're standing by uh, for any presidential remarks. Stand by with us for that. Uh, but first... There's some brand new CNN polling just released in the last hour that shows Republican lawmakers are taking a solid hit after failing to repeal Obamacare. Take a look at this. Seven in ten Americans now say they disapprove of the job Republican leaders in Congress are doing. That's a 15-point drop since January when President Trump first took office. And this comes as the president is escalating a feud with someone who's supposed to be one of his key allies in Congress, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. For a second day in a row, uh, the president is attacking McConnell, tweeting from his golf resort this only minutes ago. Mitch, get back to work and put repeal and replace, tax reform and cuts, and a great infrastructure bill on my desk for signing. You can do it. Earlier today, the president tweeted another tweet. Listen to this. Can you believe that Mitch McConnell, who has screamed repeal and replace for seven years, couldn't get it done, must repeal and replace Obamacare? The president's attacks that come after McConnell said this in his home state of Kentucky earlier in the week. Our new president had, of course, not been in this line of work before, and I think had excessive expectations about how quickly things happen in the democratic process. All right, let's discuss with our chief political analyst, Gloria Borger, the senior White House correspondent for Bloomberg News, Margaret Tollip, and CNN political director, David Chelly. And uh, Gloria, this uh, battle he's going, that the president's having with Mitch McConnell, what's up with that? Well, maybe Jeff Sessions feels a little good about that because he's off the griddle uh, this time. Look, I think the president uh, feels that he, he there's no hell to pay for him for attacking Mitch McConnell. Uh, in our poll that, that you were just talking about, we asked Republicans who they uh, their approval ratings of both Trump and the Republican leadership, and the approval rating for Donald Trump is about double what it is for the Republican leadership. And Republicans overwhelmingly do not uh, blame uh, they do not blame the president for all the problems uh, that have occurred legislatively, and so this president believes he can attack. Republicans. He's attacked more than a half a dozen of them, calling them quitters, uh, because it works with his base. Now, in the long term, I would argue, it might not work so well for him if he's trying to rally his troops because they want to know that they can trust him and that he will have their back. And it's very clear from what he's done to members of the Senate that, in fact, he won't. But for the larger picture, his base thinks it's fine to go after him. It's so awkward, though, for other Republicans David in the Senate to see the President of the United States going after the Republican the, the, the majority leader. Uh, right, although they have observed Donald Trump's behavior for two years throughout the Republican nomination race, and this is not unfamiliar territory that Donald Trump and he's would be going president. after. He's, he's got to president. deal with the Republican leadership. There's no doubt, uh, and he doesn't do the job of President like other Presidents that have, and I think that they've observed that for the last six months. I. Everything we're saying is true about our polls. It is very easy to see that the politics of the blame game, Donald Trump versus Republicans in Congress, Donald Trump wins that. What is not clear at all to me is how this actually makes it easier for him to get a legislative victory. Because that's actually what Donald Trump needs. So does Mitch McConnell, so do the Republican senators. But Donald Trump, who's sitting at 38% approval rating, just having a strategy that excites your base because you're taking on the Republican establishment, doesn't actually get to where Donald Trump needs to go, which is he needs to rack up some W's because his own numbers need a, a victory and a success story to tell. And he makes a good point, uh, David uh, Margaret, because in, in our poll, among Republicans uh, who were asked who's most responsible for the lack of bills passed so far, look at this, opposition from Democrats, 51%, disagreement among Republicans, 32%, only 8% of these Republicans say a lack of leadership from Trump is responsible. Well, there t one thing that stuck out to me in the poll also was the desire, or at least the reported desire for more bipartisan cooperation. But I'll say this about the president's public fight with um, Mitch McConnell. The Twitter stuff is for mainstream mass public consumption. 
but look at the same time at what he's doing. Supporting McConnell's choice to replace Jeff Sessions in the Senate, and just as we right, just before we came here on this panel, uh, naming as the new chairman of uh, the uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Committee, uh, Mitch McConnell's former energy policy advisor, a Kentucky native. So I think it's kind of that classic Trump play, right, where it's like, you know, the carrot and the stick at the same time, and you're trying to figure out like, what's the, what's the strategy? It's, it's kind chaos. of everything. It's right? chaos. You know, and there I, is read, no I read earlier, Gloria, two of the tweets. Uh, that uh, Donald Trump uh, used uh, going after Mitch McConnell. The, the original one, uh, Senator Mitch McConnell said, I have excessive expectations, but I don't think so. After seven years of hearing a repeal and replace, why not? Done. So three tweets he's devoted to going after Mitch McConnell. When something is on Donald Trump's mind, let's say we all find out about it. <laughs> and we find out about it pretty quickly, and he goes at it over and over again. I mean, look at, look at what he did to Jeff Sessions for days, for days in a row. Mitch McConnell luckily for him, has established a policy, and I think it goes back to during the campaign where he used to say, I'm not commenting on the president's tweets. I don't, I don't comment on Twitter. Well, I think he's, he and his staff are continuing that policy, and that's probably the right thing to do, particularly since, by the way, his wife is also in the president's well, yeah, cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. And that, can be, that can be a little tricky. It's a little awkward as yeah. well. Like you cover, cover the White House. There's a new White House chief of staff. I thought things were supposed to be calming down right. a bit. What happened to that? <laughs> Uh, well, maybe the president read all the coverage about how things were supposed to be coming down and decided he wanted to remind everybody who was actually in charge. But it is a really interesting dynamic. I think with General Kelly, though, um, you know, you see this dynamic where there's what we can see, the tweets continuing or a resumption of those tweets, um, the president having a little bit more public meetings at Bedminster, and then there's what we can't see, which are the conversations that are happening among the generals, as President Trump likes to call them. Uh, uh, so, sort of from the National Security Advisor to the Defense Secretary to the Chief of Staff, and to some degree at the inclusion of the Secretary of State, there are a lot of those conversations going on right now in an effort to try to guide this back, you know, towards diplomacy. Uh, I feel I still think General Kelly inside the White House has a lot of goodwill and good faith from people, but uh, in terms of publicly, um, <laughs> this sort of idea that uh, nothing to see here is uh, well, it's David, really uh, Speaking of General Kelly, uh, the retired Marine Corps four-star general who's the new White House Chief of Staff, is the Secretary of Homeland Security. Look at the new cover of Time Magazine. We know the President <laughs> likes, to, uh, oh. we <laughs> likes to look at the covers of Time <laughs> Magazine. Uh, there you can see the cover of General uh, John Kelly, uh, Trump's last best hope. Now, uh, he, 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 this is a sensitive issue when it comes to the President of the United States. Yeah, you may recall he, he, he's known for hanging some false Time Magazine covers in his clubs or what have you. He's pretty obsessed with Time Magazine covers. He likes to have his own that were legit up in his office. I don't know that it bodes well for when a staff member ends up as the cover of Time Magazine. I would be a little careful of that. Uh, Donald Trump likes to be the one out in front. No, no star is brighter in the constellation than Donald Trump. Remember when Bannon uh, Steve Bannon was on, on the cover that, that he was in the doghouse for a while. Uh, this is a little early for, for General Kelly to be in the doghouse, so we'll have to see if he sat down for an interview or posed. Uh, well, what do you I think about the point of the article that to General Kelly marked as Donald Trump's last test hope? There's been a lot of, this is the most important test and this is the last time, but I do think there's General Kelly himself said no to this job several times before taking it. There is a recognition um, among everyone inside that White House, including the general himself, that this is absolutely a critical and pivotal time for the White House to turn around the narrative that's been dogging them the first six months of office. Yes, uh, the country's in the midst of a crisis with North Korea. Now an actual as, crisis, as now yes. All of this politics is unfolding as well. Guys, thanks very much, uh, Gloria, David, and Margaret. Good conversation. Coming up, my next guest has a message for the President of the United States when it comes to North Korea. Quote, this is not a playground. Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro, Texas. There you see him live. He's standing by to join us. We'll talk about the growing nuclear threat right after this. The joy of real cream in 15 calories per serving. Enough said. Ready with Share the Joy. The most amazing thing about being a woman is that we can bounce back from anything. And so can our hair. Total Repair 5 from L'Oreal fights five signs of damage. Five problems, one solution. Total Repair 5 from L'Oreal. All this stuff. Such a waste. 
Glue. Gorilla Glue. Of course. Gorilla Glue bonds wood, stone, metal, ceramic, and more. Gorilla Glue for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Golden Corral's prime rib and shrimp spectacular is here. Slow roasted prime rib. Shrimp skewers hot off the grill. Garlic herb butter sirloin and butterfly shrimp. Dinner's just $13.99. So hurry in for endless prime rib and shrimp. Golden Corral, your choice rules. Whether it's new business, new boss, or new romance, these are the designer moments. Now designer suits start at $2.79 at Ben's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look in a designer suit. to other parts of her body. She's also taking prescription eye brands with an aromatase inhibitor, which is for postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer as the first hormonal-based therapy. Eye brands plus letrozole was significantly more effective at delaying disease progression versus letrozole. And eye brands plus letrozole shrunk tumors in over half of these patients. Patients taking eye brands can develop low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infections that can lead to death. Before taking eye brands, tell your doctor if you have fever, chills, or other signs of infection, liver or kidney problems, pregnant, breastfeeding, or plan to become pregnant. Common side effects include low white blood cell and low platelet counts, infections, tiredness, nausea, sore mouth, abnormalities in liver blood tests, diarrhea, hair thinning or loss, vomiting, rash, and loss of appetite. Julie calls it her new normal because a lot has changed, but a lot hasn't. Ask your doctor about Ibrance, the number one prescribed FDA-approved oral combination treatment for HR-positive, HER2-negative MBC. When I heard that sound, and there was a big adventure waiting, Bill Gates' game plan was world domination. Steve Jobs represents the entrepreneur of art. The 90s, Sunday at 9. You're unbelievable. Bug bites, itchy rash. Sucker scratching. Sucker scratching. Relief starts now. Gold Bond Rapid Relief. Two inch fighting medicines instantly relieve bug bites and all kinds of summer itches so you can get back to fun. Gold Bond Relief starts now. No two allergy days feel the same. With Nasacort, even on your worst days, there's relief. Unlike any histamines that stop just one cause of nasal allergy symptoms, Nasacort stops more. So no matter what kind of allergy day you're having, relief is yours with Nasacort. This summer, the hits keep coming on Epic's Insane. And don't miss Summer's next big hit, Chris O'Dowd and Ray Romano in the new original series, Get Shorty. That's going to make a movie with cash. Easier to spend. Only on Epix. Get Epix in the Dish Movie Pack. Call 855-640-4925. Do we have a deal? This is CNN, the most trusted name in New York. Many lawmakers here in the United States are deeply divided over President Trump's fire and fury threat against North Korea. Case in point, just this morning, Republican Senator Marco Rubio tweeted this. Uh, attacks on POTUS, President of the United States, for statement on North Korean nukes are ridiculous. They act as if North Korea would act different if he used nicer words. Uh, but Democratic Congressman Joaquin Castro of uh, Texas has a very different view. The President Trump needs to stop acting like he's in a playground fight. He writes and start behaving like the President of the United States. Joining us now, Congressman Joaquin Castro. He's a member of both the Intelligence and Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Walt. So what's your bottom line? Do you think the President's posture, his public statements, at least so far, as far as North Korea are concerned, could be dangerous? Well, I think they could be, and I think most of all they're not helpful. We're not going to solve the situation and the crisis with North Korea and try to denuclearize them by getting into either a shouting match with them, uh, by mouthing off to them, or by getting into a Twitter war with Kim Jong-un. And so the, the president, I think, needs to approach this in a more responsible, less inflammatory way. It doesn't mean that you can't be strong behind the scenes, but I don't think that uh, all of the inflammatory comments about fury and so forth are helpful to the situation. Well, how do you think the U.S. should be countering the latest North Korean threats 
to the U.S., specifically the U.S. territory of Guam? Well, first, I think the administration can be very proud that they helped usher through the U.N., the strongest sanctions on North Korea ever, not just by the United States, but by the world. And the administration should be proud of it and also should be building upon that and using it as leverage to bring North Korea to the table to talk about denuclearization. Instead of taking time to do that, the president, it looks like without consulting his generals or the military or certainly Congress and our allies in the region, instead has taken upon himself uh, to make inflammatory remarks. Uh, I think he needs to settle down, consult with those groups, with our allies, and take advantage of the sanctions that were just passed. Well, what happens if uh, the North Koreans do, as they're threatening to do, launch these four intermediate-range ballistic missiles uh, over Japan towards Guam, and they actually land, as they say, they could achieve uh, 20 or 25 miles off the coast of Guam. What does the U.S. do then? Well, the first thing is that I think some of these threats have been made because the president has also made his own threats. Uh, and so that's why I'm saying that we need to allow diplomacy a chance to work instead of going tit for tat with a 32-year-old dictator in North Korea. The, the point about diplomacy, I keep hearing that, uh, Congressman, and uh, the, the, the critics argue this. Diplomacy was tried for the eight years of the Bill Clinton administration. Diplomacy was tried for the eight years of the George W. Bush administration. It was tried for eight years of the Obama administration. Now, by the U.S. intelligence estimate, North Korea not only has uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, but they're capable of miniaturizing nuclear warheads and put those warheads on those missiles. Diplomacy over all of these years clearly has failed. Uh, well, you're right, Wolf. If the reports are true, then you're dealing with a nuclear state, and the only question is, when they press that button, how far can those missiles go, and will they hit their targets? Because of that, we have to approach this in a sane and sober way. And remember, Kim Jong-un and North Korea have never existed under the kinds of sanctions and the kinds of society that they will have because of those sanctions uh, that were passed by the United Nations. So we have to allow ourselves a chance to leverage those sanctions to bring them to the table. I understand that, that diplomacy has failed us before. I understand that the six-party talks, for example, didn't work. But they're also facing something they've never faced before in those sanctions. Let me get to, uh, while I have you, uh, uh, Congressman, you're on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, it's one of the committees investigating Russia's meddling in the uh, 2016 presidential election here in the United States. We learned yesterday that FBI agents raided former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort's home uh, in Alexandria, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Didn't last month. The FBI agents went in uh, with a search warrant. Uh, do you think that, that, uh, that he actually committed a crime? Because in order to get a federal judge to, to give that search warrant, there has to be probable cause that a crime may have been committed. Well, uh, ultimately that, that determination will be left up to a grand jury to bring charges and then ultimately to a judge or jury. Uh, but it's certainly remarkable that uh, the special counsel was able to obtain a warrant, especially at that time of day, to go collect the information, whatever information uh, they did. And so it shows you that this investigation has gotten very close to President Trump. Remember, this was his campaign manager for a time. Uh, and also that the special counsel is not pulling any punches, that he's not playing favorites or backing off any particular person. And it's good to see that he's running a thorough and fair investigation. Joaquin well, Castro uh, of Texas, thanks so much for joining us, Congressman. Thank you. Coming up, uh, we'll get a different perspective. Republican Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin. You see him live. He's standing by to join us. We have lots to discuss with him. We'll be right back. There's nothing more important to me than my vacation. So when I need to book a hotel, I want someone who makes it easy to find what I want. Booking.com gets it. And with their price match, I know I'm getting the best price every time. Your vacation is very important. That's why Booking.com makes finding the right hotel for the right price easy. Visit Booking.com now to find out why we're booking. Yeah. It's time to rethink what's possible. Rethink the experience. Rethink your allergy bills. Flonase Sensimist Allergy Relief uses unique Mist Pro technology. 
and helps block six key inflammatory substances with a gentle mist. Most allergy pills only block one, and six is greater than one. Rethink your allergy relief. Flonase Sensimest. hotel or car or activity in one place and save, where would you go? Expedia gives you the world in your hand, so you can see more of it. Expedia. You might take something for your heart, your joints, or your digestion. So why wouldn't you take something for the most important part of you, your brain? With an ingredient originally found in jellyfish, Prevagen is now the number one selling brain health supplement in drugstores nationwide. Prevagen, the name to remember. Falls are the number one cause of injury to senior citizens. Falling downstairs can be disastrous. Acorn Stairlifts has a solution. Just don't fall. Sit, relax, run with an Acorn Stairway, the world's leader in stairways. That's right. Don't let limited mobility keep you from going up and down your stairs, even outside. Call Acorn Stairways now for a free information kit and no obligation quote. Now you can safely ride with your Acorn Stairway. Now I don't have to worry about him climbing those stairs again. And our acorn stairlift was very affordable. Our acorn stairlift is definitely more affordable than moving. The acorn stairlift has a padded seat and backrest for maximum comfort. It easily folds up for access to the stairway. Five safety sensors stop your acorn stairlift if there's something in the way. And it even runs during power outages. And I'm the king of my own castle. Yeah. You'll be working directly with the world's leader in stairlifts. That's right. There's no middleman. Acorn's trained technicians professionally install your stairlift directly to the staircase, in most cases in two hours or less, with no need for special construction. We don't leave until you're completely comfortable using your Acorn stairlift. Don't risk a serious fall down the stairs. I was really surprised at how little they cost. Call for your free no-obligation information tip and quote from Acorn Stairlift. Just don't fall. Safely ride up and down your steps. Give your life a lift with an acorn stair lift. Call 1-800-931-0746 right now for your free information kit or visit our website today. That number again is 1-800-931-0746. 1-800-931-0746. Call now. Call now. Closed captioning brought to you by Act Oral Care. For a healthier mouth, go beyond brushing with Act. Megan Smile is getting a lot of attention because she uses Act Mouthwash. Act strengthens enamel, protects teeth from harmful acids, and helps prevent cavities. Go beyond brushing with Act. In roughly 20 minutes, that President Trump will receive a high-level briefing from members of his national security team. Among those uh, meeting with the President, the Vice President Mike Pence, uh, the President's National Security Advisor, General H.R. McMaster, and the new White House Chief of Staff, re retired Marine Corps General John Kelly. They will all participate in this uh, uh, briefing. We're also told the President and the Vice President, they may speak afterwards. There will be cameras there. We'll have live coverage of that. Uh, the briefing comes as tensions between the United States and North Korea near an all-time high and as leaders around the world look for any sign as to what the President, President Trump, might do next. Joining us now to discuss the President's approach, Republican Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin. Congressman, th thanks so much for joining us. It's good to be with you, Wolf. So, uh, Republican Congress, uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, I should say, says he's spoken at length about North Korea with President Trump. Uh, he says the president is willing to abandon what's called strategic patience and actually launch a preemptive strike against North Korea if necessary. Is that something you think would be a good idea? Well, listen, I, I think that comes with a lot of risk, as you've reported. Um, what happens to Seoul, uh, South Korea, um, if uh, North Korea then responds? 
Uh, what I think is uh, refreshing is we have some of the brightest military strategists in the world that work for the U.S. military and advise the U.S. president. Uh, so I think the president right now is going through every different situation to make sure we can stand down this North Korea threat. Um, and one of them is a preemptive strike. So I think we have to look at the facts on the ground and also the advice from military leaders. Did uh, President Trump draw a red line with North Korea when he stated earlier in the week that if North Korea made any more, quote, threats, they will be met with fire and fury, in his words, like the world uh, has never seen. North Korea, as you know, responded uh, last night uh, that, uh, with a threat of its own, saying they will launch four intermediate-range ballistic missiles over Japan, aimed towards the U.S. territory of Guam by mid-August. That would be next week, unless they see some, uh, some toning down of the U.S. threats. It's interesting that North Korea wants us to tone down our rhetoric. I mean, who has... Uh, for decades made threats to the United States uh, and our territories around the world. Um, I, I look at President Trump and he's talking tough. And if you look at bullies on the playground or you look at a bully in North Korea, they understand uh, tough talk, they understand strength. And that's what Donald Trump is projecting right now. And I think it's important that not just North Korea, but the rest of the world understand that Donald Trump is being crystal clear. Uh, that he will protect um, uh, Guam and American interests, and he, they will be met with fire and fury um, should they continue with uh, their armaments, with their with their nuclear uh, tests and their long-range missile tests, uh, which can bring a payload to our shores. Um, that clarity, I think, is refreshing. You know, this it was, it was it's been three presidents uh, who have tried the passive approach that hasn't done anything to step back. Uh, the aggression of North Korea. It's failed in Cuba. It failed in Iran, this passivity. I mean, in Iran, we gave them, you know, billions of dollars of unmarked cash and gold. That hasn't gotten uh, 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 that regime to come back into the global fold. They're emboldened by weakness. Strength is what gets them to stand back. As you know, uh, the uh, president, uh, by his, his, his advisors, have, have suggested he ad lib that threat of fire and fury uh, the other day, not necessarily coordinated. it. That wasn't scripted. He just spoke out about it. Does that concern you at all, times? Well, I know the, the, the words weren't scripted, but the tone and the strength of the message, I know, had been discussed. Uh, or that's what the White House has put out. So um, what I, if, uh, okay, let me just let me interrupt for a second. Right. So if the North Koreans go ahead and launch these four intermediate-range ballistic missiles toward Guam, and there's 160,000 plus U.S. citizens, people of Guam are U.S. citizens who, who live there. Even if it lands in the in the waters 20 miles, let's say, from the coast, as they as they project, they could do. What what would you want the U.S. to do in response to that? I, I don't want to uh, put what my ideas are uh, on your show. I think this is important for the president to continue to consult with uh, his military advisors. Uh, but there might be swift and strong response and reaction from the United States government. They have to be aware of that. And I do think that uh, the Kim regime has been used to playing American presidents and their passivity. Um, and, and they could chart that out. They know how we're going to respond with Donald Trump. I think there's a, a, a bit of uncertainty with how he's going to act, which uh, is confusing the North Koreans, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, the bottom line, Wolf, is how do you reduce this threat? Um, do we continue the failed policies of the past, or do we change our tone and our rhetoric? And even that change in tone, I think, sends a message to, uh, to China and to Russia to say, listen, you guys better get involved. We can, we can make a difference with sanctions, but we all have to be on the same page putting pressure on North Korea. You can't, you can't say one thing to the international community, China, but then continue your trade with North Korea and support that world regime. If you don't want American boots on your soil, if you don't want to see uh, a nuclear armed conflict, get involved. This is escalating, and we have a nuclear um, hermit regime that's making nuclear threats to the rest of the world. This is unacceptable, it's untenable. Yeah. And, and we need to have some pushback here. What is impressive but, but, is that we'll follow, uh, under, under, under the leadership of Vicki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., all 15 members of the U.N. Security Council unanimously approved a very tough sanctions resolution against North Korea. Very quickly, do you agree, I believe, as some of your Democratic and Republican colleagues in the House and Senate believe that uh, before the U.S. were to launch any preemptive strike against North Korea, Congress should approve a resolution authorizing the use of military force against North Korea? I think it's pretty challenging. Um, you, you lose your, uh, your, uh, your surprise component if you go to the Congress and say we're going to strike North Korea. Um, I want to
to put this within our generals and with our president, uh, who, are, who are duly elected by the American people, um, to take that action by surprise if they choose to do so. But I want to make it clear, well, uh, this, it, this can explode. This could be a powder keg and be very bad for the world. Uh, I think a preemptive strike um, is the last resort um, of all the tools that we have in our toolbox. Uh, because you don't know how this can play out and it can be bad for everybody. So um, let's try to get other folks to the table and put pressure on North Korea and have a peaceful resolution. That's the best net outcome we can have. Let's, let's hope. Uh, Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Wolf. Coming up, uh, there's a huge mystery unfolding in Cuba right now. U.S. State Department employees have been injured in what is being described as a possible acoustic attack. So what happened? Is a third country involved? We're going live to that right after this. Introducing the all-new Volkswagen Tiguan. The new king of the concrete jungle. At Whole Foods Market, we believe in food that's naturally beautiful, fresh, and nutritious. So there are no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no artificial preservatives in any of the food we sell. We believe in real food. Whole Foods Market. For 100 years, heritage and innovation have made Gillette the number one shave in America. Now get Gillette quality at lower prices every day. Brought to you by 1,200 workers in Boston. We're proud of giving you our best. Gillette, the best a man can get. The Dark Tower is the number one movie in America. I do not kill with my gun. I kill with my heart. Ace has grown to 5,000 stores. That's twice as many helpful hardware locations as any of the warehouse stores. But we're not just about numbers. We're about helping neighbors. Because each one of our stores is a part of your community. Yep, 5,000. That's a lot. But it's nowhere close to the number of ways we can help you. To celebrate, join us for the 5,000 store sale. Don't miss the daily deals and incredible savings on hundreds of items throughout the store, Friday through Monday only. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. If you battle chronic back pain or joint pain, turn it off with Icy Hot Smart Relief. Among leading brands, only Smart Relief is indicated to relieve chronic pain. Imagine the difference it'll make in your life. Turn off chronic pain with Icy Hot Smart Relief. Duncan just protected his family with a $500,000 life insurance policy. How much do you think it cost him? $100 a month? $75? $50? Actually, Duncan got his $500,000 for under $28 a month, less than a dollar a day. His secret? Select quote. In just minutes, a select quote agent will comparison shop nearly a dozen highly rated life insurance companies and give you a choice of your five best rates. Duncan's wife, Cassie, got a $750,000 policy for under $21 a month. Give your family the security it needs at a price you can afford. Since 1985, Select Quote has saved over a million families millions of dollars on life insurance. Call now, 800 556 0900, or visit SelectQuote.com. Discover what over a million families know now. We shop, you save. Political comedy has become a part of the mainstream discussion. And that's why we run into a third time! We're not afraid to make fun of the people that are in power. The History of Comedy, Sunday night at 10 on CNN. Consumer Cellular makes it easy to stay in touch with family and stay within our budget. Now our cell phone bill is only a fraction of what it used to be. Our average customers get everything they need for about $25 a month, and plans start at only $10 a month with no contracts. Consumer Cellular has a great choice of phones. Check out my new one. I picked this simple phone. I use my son's old smartphone. Check my number, too. Consumer Cellular has been an approved AARP provider since 2008, and members get exclusive discounts. It's a good thing Consumer Cellular is always there. Now, sometimes I need a little help. Sometimes. We're proud to have received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service among non-contract wireless providers. Over the years, we've seen a lot of change. We actually use change. Luckily, we have some things we can still afford. Why consumer cellular? Stop paying too much for wireless service. Switch now and for a limited time, get 
Get a $20 credit on any new line of service. Call 1-800-481-7414. Go online or visit a Target store today. The Cost of Art, Saturday nights at 9 on CNN. Sounds like a plot from a movie. Several U.S. State Department employees in Havana, Cuba, experiencing unexplained hearing loss and other physical ailments. U.S. officials believe they may have been victims of what's described as an acoustic attack and may have spelled two Cuban diplomats from the United States as a result. Let's go to Havana. CNN's Patrick Ottman is on the scene for us. Explain what we know. This is a very, very significant, serious story, but complicated. Very much so, Wolf. And let's just start off with what is an acoustic attack. U.S. government sources tell us that American diplomats at the residences here in Havana, their homes, uh, started feeling uh, unwell, or perhaps that they were suffering from a concussion, that one diplomat uh, suffered hearing loss and now will need hearing aids. And U.S. officials believe that somebody, they haven't identified who yet, placed very sophisticated devices in and or around the, these diplomats' homes that emit a signal that you can't hear, a frequency that essentially causes these very serious kinds of health problems. The U.S. Uh, is investigating who could have been behind this. They believe perhaps that a third country wanting to, quote, drive a wedge between the U.S. and Cuba may be involved, but there is still a lot of unanswered questions here. The Cuban government has denied any involvement in this, say they're cooperating with the U.S. and are even allowing FBI agents to come to Cuba to help investigate. Uh, U.S. government sources tell us so. They believe that some individuals in the Cuban government must have been involved to allow these attacks to go forward. And what we're told, though, Wolf, is that for the time being, there d does not appear to have been any further attacks. So basically what, what, you're, what you're suggesting is some very high-pitched audio was, was sent out to the homes of these U.S. diplomats that they couldn't hear anything, but it would have an impact on their hearing. Is that right? That, that's correct. It's, it's a sonic weapon. Uh, this is a, a new tool that countries use uh, to disrupt uh, and cause uh, injuries, and it's very hard to track down. None of these devices, as far as we know, have been discovered, but uh, again, sources telling us that these devices were placed in diplomats' homes or around their homes to try and cause them great distress. Wolf. I'm sure uh, it's an ongoing mystery that needs to be uh, fixed. Thanks so much. Patrick Ottman is our man in Havana. Appreciate it very much. Uh, that's it for me. To all of our viewers here in the United States and around the world, thanks very much for watching. I'll be back 5 p.m. Eastern in the Situation Room. Stay tuned. I'll have a special interview with the former Obama National Security Advisor, Susan Rice. She'll join us live during the 6 p.m. Eastern hour. In the meantime, the news continues right after a quick break. regarding the U.S. government's Home Affordable Refinance Program, or HARP. We've told you about HARP in the past, and we're happy to report that nearly 3.5 million homeowners have already taken advantage of this fantastic money-saving program. But there are so many more of you who could be saving hundreds of dollars every month on your mortgage. Quicken Loans is here to help you save your money. Why Quicken Loans? The home loan experts at Quicken Loans fully understand the HARP guidelines. We'll work with you to understand your specific circumstances and strive to find the financial solution that's best for you. Then we'll guide you through each step of the mortgage refinance process to make sure that it's both simple and easy. And for seven years in a row now, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. And for the third year in a row, they've also ranked us highest in the nation for mortgage servicing. If you're not familiar with HARP, it's a U.S. government program designed specifically for homeowners who have little or no equity. 
A great feature of the HARP program is that most HARP refinance loans do not require an appraisal, and there are fewer income verification requirements. That makes it simpler, easier, and even faster. And even if you've been denied for a HARP loan in the past, new guidelines mean that you now may be eligible. Give us a call, and we'll give you a Quicken Loans mortgage review. And we'll do all we can to help you save money on your mortgage. It's simple and easy. Find out if you're eligible to take advantage of today's incredibly low interest rates and start saving money every month on your mortgage. Call Quicken Loans today or go to quickenloans.com for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. Consider getting a walk-in tub. We have great news. No more cold seats. For a limited time, when you purchase a safe step walk-in tub, we'll upgrade your order to include our newest feature, a heated seat. That's a $600 value. Free. But that's not all. The new and improved dual hydrotherapy system now has foot massaging jets to help soothe aching feet. And as always, safe step walk-in tubs are built to maximize safety so you can stay in your home and enjoy the comforts of bathing again. Call the number on your screen now for more information and a free, no obligation consultation. Our new walk-in tub is affordable and could change your life. Thousands of people just like you are already enjoying the safety and luxury comfort of their safe step walk-in tub. Financing is available, so call 1-800-722-6464. That's 1-800-722-6464. You deserve it. Call and get yours today. This is CNN, the most trusted name in news. Hi there, I'm Brooke Baldwin. You're watching CNN. Thank you for being with me. This very minute, President Donald Trump taking a break from his golf cart to meet with his national security team about the back and forth nuclear threats with North Korea. President Trump will huddle with his advisors inside his New Jersey golf club as North Korea refuses to back down on its threats. In fact, not only is North Korea mocking President Trump's unscripted warning of fire and fury, calling it, quote, a load of nonsense from a leader, quote, bereft of reason. The regime has now put out a new and detailed warning of its own, outlining its plan to strike near the U.S. territory of Guam. Now, North Korea says it involves the simultaneous firing of four missiles aimed at the waters just off the Pacific Island, the statement said the plan for this show of force would be ready by the middle of this month and we'll simply need the final sign-off from Kim Jong-un for an immediate launch. So let's start there. Jeff Zeleny is our senior White House correspondent. Um, can you, just in terms of this national security meeting, take us inside. Uh, who will be there? What can we expect? Well, Brooke, we know uh, Vice President Mike Pence is uh, in New Jersey this afternoon at the President's uh, Golf Course and Resort. So he'll be joining that briefing. It will be led by um, the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster. He's also in New Jersey for this meeting, as well as the new Chief of Staff, General John Kelly, as well as other advisors. But, Brooke, the significance of this is, uh, is important. This was added to the President's schedule. The White House uh, certainly wants to make clear the President is staying on top of this during his working vacation. But he did not respond, the White House did not respond, intentionally so, to those uh, provocative comments that you read earlier from North Korea in response to the President's words. So we'll see if we hear from the President later this afternoon. We believe that he is uh, likely to say something at the end of this briefing. Uh, but uh, there's no question, Brooke, uh, several advisors uh, um, hope the rhetoric uh, sort of de-escalates a bit. And it, and it cools down a bit. That's why we have, haven't seen the president uh, talking about this on social media. He's not responded to North Korea directly. We'll see what he says today, but, but no question about it. This is uh, the biggest, most pressing foreign policy challenge on the president's desk. They'll be learning more about that in this hour, Brooke. 
we will see what he says um, and turn it around in, in just a little bit. Jeff Zellini, thank you so much. We'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, let's turn now, though, to CNN's Tom Foreman. Uh, in terms of Guam, I mean, what do we know about the weapons that North Korea is threatening to use off of the, the nearest territory to the peninsula? Well, we know the very serious challenge. If you take a look at the general layout here from Pyongyang down here to Guam, you can see it's a little bit over 2,100 miles. I want to show you the, the if you if you go into some of the details here, you can see that what they're talking about doing with these intermediate range missiles is dropping them somewhere around 19 miles off the island. Well, look, here are U.S. territorial waters, which go out right to the same sort of area, 19 to 20, 26 miles, somewhere out there. So their ability to try to drop something close enough to not be in territorial waters, but but close enough to seem like they're able to control it that way, that's a big part of the challenge. We're not talking about the big, giant range of their giant missiles, which will go very far here, the intercontinental ballistic missiles we've been talking about lately, but more intermediate range missiles. Why does Guam matter, though? Look at this. 162,000 U.S. citizens living there. They can't vote in the election here, but they are U.S. citizens. They, this has been a strategic area for a long time, 210 square miles, not that big, but very important Air Force and Naval bases there. And if you look at them, there are thousands of troops here. Anderson Air Force Base, this is where a lot of our most advanced bombers, stealth bombers, B-52 bombers, operate out of here, the B-52 being a very old one. They operate out of this area. Also, there is the naval base Guam. Some of our most forward submarines operate out of here, which gather a lot of intelligence about North Korea. There is very much a reason that North Korea would want to put pressure on Guam because of this giant and extremely advanced technological uh, military assets for the U.S. there. But in doing this, they are playing a very dangerous game, Brooke, because take a look at these missiles here that we're talking about. These missiles, if one of these come in close to that island, they're talking about four of them in a sense bracketing the island, sort of showing all around where they could hit. There is no question that the potential for something going wrong here, even if they do that right, is very high. And the threat of them doing that could provoke a very strong response. We're going to talk in a second more about the specific threats. Tom, thank you. Let me bring in Jeffrey Lewis. He is with the James Martin Center for Non-Proliferation Studies. So, uh, Jeffrey, to, to Tom's point here, this is this is what we're hearing from uh, North Korea, right? The threats against not only Guam, but, but U.S.'s mainland, talking about fall into a sea of fire, uh, turn the mainland into a theater of nuclear war, uh, versus these detailed plans, you know, to fire these missiles off the coast of Guam. What what do, does that sort of language tell you? Or any clues about their actual, you know, military capability versus bluster? Well, the North Koreans love colorful language. I mean, um, I, when I got into this business, they used to talk about turning Seoul into a sea of fire. So that part is pretty normal for them. What's different about this statement is its specificity. Uh, what we're seeing right now is the North Koreans are making threats, and then the president was responding with his own threats, and so there's a kind of escalation going on. Uh, and so the North Koreans have issued a very specific threat. Uh, it's not a threat to attack Guam, but it is a threat to do something very provocative. Uh, and so I think we're, we're entering a phase where it's a little bit dangerous. Well, what's in it for North Korea to be so specific and say, he, he, here's exactly what we want to do? Well, you know, the North Koreans are a little different. Um, the way the North Koreans think the about deterrence <laughs> is that you, you have to be very aggressive. So in 2010, the North Koreans actually sank a South Korean ship, uh, killing 46 sailors. Uh, mm. You know, they did that calculating that that provocation would actually make South Korea back off uh, some of the pressure that they felt that they were under. So I think what the North Koreans feel is that they can't really back down, and so if they're going to be threatened, they're going to respond with threats of their own. Okay. Um, we've heard from the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson saying that the President's comments, the, the fire and fury, you know, what was about, to your point, this is how Pyongyang talks, right, in, in fiery, literally, language. Uh, North Korea responded by, by chiding the U.S. President, calling it a load of nonsense, and said, sound dialogue is not possible with such a guy bereft of reason and only absolute force can work on him. You know, I, speaking that same language doesn't appear to be working, Jeffrey, so how do you think the U.S. should be countering this kind of aggression? Well, I think Secretary Tillerson did the right thing. Uh, I don't think the improvised threat was very clever. 
Uh, and so I think he was right to say, well, that's just how the North Koreans talk too, and what the president meant was. Uh, ultimately, I think we're at a point where North Korea has the capability to threaten the United States with nuclear weapons, and it can threaten our allies in the region with nuclear weapons. And so what we have to do is get in the business of talking with them about reducing tension. It's not a very ambitious goal, but I think the reality is if we're going to deter North Korea, uh, we have to make sure we deter them stably. Uh,